let's kind of walk through some of these numbers. So the first thing we all know is that it's a $500 million deal, right? $250 million from taxpayers, $250 million uh, from the owners. Now we're, then you've got the two sides. The Governor Walker wants to, to sort of match them up and say one is greater than the other. So the costs if the bucks stay. And the figure we've talked about is $400 million. But that's not the figure the governor used in his speech. What's, how's he presenting it to voters? Right. The, the basic equation is half and half. The public will pay half and the bucks will pay half. But the public's half of $250 million includes $80 million from the state as the governor indicated. But that 250 is really just a nominal number that we're involved. So based on estimates that we've been told that 250 could actually become over 20 years, more like 400 million. All right, and in, in the presentation that the governor talked about 80 million, which is the state tree, so he's sort of kind of got a low ball figure to start from when he's calculating this, this scale. Right, 80 from the state, but that doesn't take into account the local taxpayer contribution, again, totaling 250 million okay. plus whatever interest. Okay. We'll say this is the easy part to understand. So we'll say it's 400 million dollars, which is what people right. are telling us is when the bonding and interest comes in. That's the one side. So the other side of the equation is the cost of the bucks leave, and that is what the governor is pegging at 419 million dollars. I want to run through these pieces, and then we'll talk about them a little more. So 130 million of that comes from the current income taxes paid by uh, bucks employees and the NBA players. So when a team plays in town, they, they pay a share of their income tax to the state. $169 million comes from the growth in the income taxes. So over the next period of years, it's expected to increase NBA salaries and so forth. And then $120 million comes from the Bradley Center costs. So let's, let's start with the Bradley Center costs. What, what does that $120 million involve? And yeah, the $120 million is, is a little more difficult, I think, to to nail down uh, the loss in state income taxes from NBA players, people can understand if we don't have an NBA arena, NBA players don't pay income taxes. The 120 million that the the governor is including is money that the Bradley Center has in expenses and in debts. And the 120 million he has said there exists on the books, so to speak, has not been independently verified. So for him to include that and say, gee, that would be a cost to taxpayers. Uh, we don't know independently if that 120 million is, is solid. Secondly, we don't know that taxpayers from the state would necessarily be held responsible for that. His argument is, look, if the Bucks leave, the Bradley Center's in financial trouble, the state would have to step in and pick up this $120 million. Right. Well, what is That's though, for, right For readers, I mean, viewers, though, they, they don't, the, the state does have a specific role, right? This is the Bradley Center when it was created as a uh, gift from the Jane Pettit. It's it's an instrumentality of the state. There is a role. It's not like the state is just sweeping in and right. being assigned the the potential right. debt and costs, right? That's true. I mean, certainly the it's not as though the state would have to rescue it sort of out of the goodness of its heart. It, it does have an ownership right. interest in the Bradley Center, and you know potentially could be tapped to pick up any expenses or debt that the Bradley right. Center has, but that's not as firm, let's say, as the governor makes it seem. Right, okay. So let's roll back to that question of the income taxes. And okay. um, you and I pay income taxes. We're not LeBron James, so when he comes to town, he pays a little bit more, and that's why the state's interested in that, and that's kind of the heart of the argument. So there's some we think is a pretty solid number that here's what they have paid, and that number's been consistent and going up. That's the 130, mm -hmm. correct? So what about this, the growth? How, how certain is that, or what are the, the red flags that people should be watching on that point? Yeah, there's certainly an expectation that if the NBA players keep playing in Milwaukee, that the taxes they pay to the state will rise. The NBA just signed a, a, a huge TV contract that will certainly, in the next few years at least, raise the salaries of NBA players. Therefore, they would pay more income taxes to the state. But going out over 20 years, that, that projection is a little harder to, to figure. There, uh, who knows what the TV contracts might be down the road, what salaries might end up being. So it's a little bit more of a difficult yeah. number 20 years out. Right. And people, there, there was also in your story, they talked about what's called the substitution effect. So it's, it's not quite as direct as if you're taking just money people already spend. I mean, th that some of this money will show up in state coffers sort of indirectly right. and wind its way around. So if we lose the, the bucks, we lose the NBA income tax payments, 
But that doesn't mean people who go to Bradley Center to Bucks games, spend money on tickets, spend money at the facility, would just sit on that money. They would spend it maybe on other sporting events or in other forms of entertainment. And that, in turn, generates taxes of its own. If a business is suddenly making more money, able to pay their employees more money, that generates taxes. So to some extent, we lose the, the income tax payments from the NBA players, but at least some of that would be made up through other taxes. All right. We should note we didn't put this one to the truth meter in part because there isn't even a drafted bill yet to look at, and there hasn't none of these numbers have been vetted by the, the Fiscal Bureau or others to really tell how certain they are. So we just tried to provide good uh, background information for people in that story. Right.